Welcome to the My Friend the Friar podcast, and thanks for listening. If you like My Friend the Friar and want to support us, please consider subscribing or following us if you haven't already done so. And if you found us on YouTube, then don't forget to click the notification bell when you subscribe so you'll be notified of new episodes when they release. Thanks again, and God bless. Let's see if that's working. So now I feel like mine kind of fell down a little bit. Yep. Good enough. Yeah. It, what do they fa- say? They fix it in, in post production? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining me and my friend, Anthony. Yeah. Not the friar. Yeah. <laughs> um, Anthony Alexander. All right. Father Stephen's busy. He's traveling. I think he's in Missouri right now. Anyway, he's. I can't keep track of him. He's, yeah. He's super busy. Uh, what, do, what do friars do? Do they friar? What's the verb for evangelize, preaching? I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> he's off doing something. Yeah. Right. So uh so Anthony here is joining me. Um nobody knows who you are. Yeah. So um I don't know, real quick, you wanna say something about yourself, help us know who you are? I'm just a man from around the way, you feel me? <laughs> Not too much to know. Um I'm from Texas, Dallas to be exact. Uh clothing brand. Uh, I'm dedicated to, to the loss of my son, basically. He uh passed back in 08 due to a heart complication. So when he passed, um, I was kind of stuck with the with the hurt and the pain of trying to figure out exactly what to do with all that emotion that I had uh, pertaining to his death. So, uh, yeah, I just decided to, you know, look deeper into his death and kind of figure out what it meant to me and how could I take the pain to kind of help me move forward in life without blaming God. <laughs> yeah. As I did in the beginning, but I quickly learned that God gave me I wouldn't say gave me. He allowed it to happen for a reason. Yeah, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So in doing that, um I was able to take a lesson from it. And um ever since then I've just been trying to grind and hustle to make his memory last forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So And that's and that's what we're talking about today is fatherhood. Yeah. That's, so that's gonna be our, our big topic. Um man, what's cool is cause you and I have been friends for yeah. A minute now. <laughs> it's been a while. So it's kind of, sometimes we, we do this icebreaker. So how, how good is your, uh, which obviously you don't need because we know each other, <laughs> but uh, just for fun, how, how good's your country voice? Like if you're going to do like a redneck kind of. My country voice? Yeah. Uh, you have a pretty man. good one, like way back there? You know what? I don't know. I think I have a good country, Southern. Uh, I don't want to use the word, uh, <laughs> you know slang country okay you okay feel me? Yeah. yeah so so <laughs> the reason i ask is betty does so she had this question who is the angel of the lord yeah and for some reason she was asking it and she kind of got on this kick <laughs> and so she would just keep saying it over and over but then it turned into a country accent yeah. so, so she's like who is the angel of the lord <laughs> so a lot of times we just have people ask who is the angel of the lord yeah. in a country accent no nah, i got you you, you got me? it you want to give a shot yeah well, uh say it again who's what who is the angel of the and instead of lord it's like load <laughs> It was Angel of the Low. I don't know. I can't do it in the country accent. It's got to be like a my accent. You know All right, what go mean? for it. Go for it. Yo, who the Angel of the Lord? <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? It's like, yeah, no syllables. Just run it along. Just run it through. Yeah, run it through. You feel That's me? funny. <laughs> oh, take your time with it. <laughs> That'll make Betty laugh. That's good. Um, Cool. What was your son's name? It was Anthony. Or what is? Sorry, is. It was Anthony Alexander Roberts. Okay. So my real last name was Roberts. Um, I don't know my father, mm-hmm. never seen him, never talked to him. So when my son was born, I wanted a, a name that kind of, to me, stuck out. I'm a fan of the Romanistic era mm-hmm. mythology. So mm-hmm. with that being said, not saying Alexander the Great is part of that, but he definitely is in that era. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So I wanted my son's name to be something I could be proud of, that I loved, and that I can just, you know, have fun with. So I took his middle name and named it Alexander. But when he passed, I wanted my children born after him to have a name that would keep his memory alive. So I changed my last name to Alexander. Okay. You know what I mean? So it all really came from him. His middle name was Alexander, and I changed my last name once he passed to Alexander so my kids would have, 
you nice. know the last name as well. Nice. Okay. And yeah. you have other kids. What are their names? We have William, Isaiah, Alexander, uh, Italise, Elizabeth, Alexander, and Anthony, Langston, Alexander. <laughs> so that's how many? Three boys? Three? No, two Wait, boys. Two boys. Well, with Anthony Roberts passed, mm-hmm. three boys, okay. one girl. Uh, nice. And yeah. Italise is about to turn one. Yeah, one on Monday. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome, man. That's crazy, though, man, how fast time goes. You it know is. What I mean? It is. Um, what's your favorite thing about her so far? Because, I mean, surprisingly, you got a lot of personality before you hit one years old. You know? But that's it, though, her personality. I think it's a mixture of me and Heidi together and the faces that she makes. <laughs> like, whenever I look at her, I don't know who it is, me or Heidi. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So when I look at her, I'm like, I'm like, yo, where did you get this from? From seeing her come out as a baby and you know you question that like i wonder when you become a certain age like who would you take more after your mother or me yeah you know what i mean so i think low-key i think it's me yeah <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. i think her attitude is more of mine but i think her her sassiness of course is heidi you feel me i, I don't own that yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're pretty. You're pretty mellow. Yeah. Well, I mean, at times, right? We yeah. we all have those moments where we kind of light up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, with fatherhood, before we get into that, so I find you to be a very reasonable person. Yeah. All right. Appreciate. It. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, I've been actually in my prayer, my study a lot lately. I've been, um, uh, I've been kind of investigating and contemplating reason. No. Yeah. And there, I don't know what it was that, uh, you know, I heard somebody probably on another podcast saying something um, about it, and it really kind of stuck in my brain. And so I want to kind of lay this down first, because I think it's the framework that we can then talk about fatherhood. Yeah. Right? Okay, so there's three types of reason, um, and there's probably more, but there's three at least that we're going to look at. Uh, one of them, deductive reasoning. Well, before I get into this, um, the thing to keep in mind is that everybody's reason, you can get to the wrong conclusion yeah. no matter what. You have sound logic, everything lines up, but you can still get to the wrong conclusion. But that doesn't mean it was a bad mental exercise. No. Yeah. Right? Okay. So deductive reasoning is kind of like hypothesis, examination, conclusion. A equals B, B equals, or if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Yeah. Right? Because you kind of get to that tra- that train. So... um. So I wrote this down so I don't I don't mess it up because like I said, I'm still <laughs> learning it. So, so we've got all these logical components, and these logical components bring us to this logical conclusion. <clears throat> but I'm going to show you how, where it makes sense if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C as well, yeah. how we can get something wrong. So if A is humans, okay, and B is Anthony, and uh, so then if all humans are named Anthony and... Anthony is your name, mm-hmm. then you're a human, right? But the problem is my name's not Anthony. Yeah. So am I not a human? <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's like it makes sense, but you got to the wrong conclusion, no. even though the logic made sense. No. Right? And so we can think of this fatherhood too, right? Like all fathers have children. Yeah. You have children. You're a father. No. Right? So it makes sense in that way. But we also know, um, kind of like what you're hitting at with with your father. No. There's a difference between being a biological father, like I made a child, no. and being a father. Yeah. Right. So, even in this case where it made sense, it's still there's something deeper. Yeah. There. Right. Uh, second kind of reasoning, inductive. It's so you're basically taking like a broad generalization of information. No. Right. And you're trying to come to a conclusion. So. Um, so let's say we're having the same conversation. We're at a men's conference or something for fathers. Okay. And you see everyone in the audience is a dad. And so you might assume that all men are fathers, but not all men are fathers. Yeah. It's just in that instance, in that case where we are, the data suggests that all men are fathers. Um, you know, you can even go out in the parking lot and you find, you know, a man who's not a father kind of thing. It's just where we were, where we are in that instance, the data that we have, the information we have leads us to a certain conclusion, but it could be false. Yeah. Okay. Last one is abductive reasoning. 
and it's kind of like inductive, but um, you're kind of moving with incomplete data, incomplete observations, and you're trying to get to what's the most likely thing. Yeah. Okay. So give you a scenario. Let's say you walk outside, right? And the grass is wet first thing in the morning. Okay. You might conclude, okay, the water sprinklers ran overnight. Yeah. Okay. But if you look at your neighbor's yard and their grass is wet too, maybe their sprinklers ran too. <laughs> right? Yeah. Or maybe something else happened. Yeah. And you look at the driveway, driveway's wet, the streets are wet, the trees are wet, the rooftops wet. Yeah. So do you think the sprinklers went off or it rained? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So the more information you get, yeah. you start to kind of put together what really happened. Mm. But like in that case, you still can't be 100% sure because like what if a fire truck drove by and it had a leaky valve and it sprayed water all over the <laughs> the, the street? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like That's whatever. Right. You, like yeah. you can still never truly know, but you can get to a point of confidence in what you know. No. Yeah. Right? So... um. So you can't just rely on the one thing. And I think that's what a lot of people do a lot of times. And I was having this conversation with my buddy Chris the other day too. People want that one thing yeah. that's a, like, show me the one thing that's going to convince me of something. Yeah. Well, that's like the A to B to C. Like, show me one thing. Yeah. But that one's really easy to make wrong. Yeah. But if you get all the bits of information, you might be able to start putting together something that is reasonably believable or true that you can kind of build your life on, right? Yeah. Or your understanding of a moment or people or whatever, right? So you can't, the trick is you can't, you can't be so settled, I guess, that you're unwilling to, uh, to contemplate other perspectives or more, Im sorry, you can't be, yeah, so settled that you're not willing to take in more information and expand your thought. Yeah. But you can't be so, can't be so unsettled that anything that changes everything falls apart. No. Yeah. Right? So you have to kind of find that sweet spot. So that's the trick. So so all of that kind of builds on the foundation of why I think you're such a reasonable person. No. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people out there who are A to B to C. No. Yeah. Um, and that's either just kind of the way their mind works or their life experiences. Like they haven't had a huge variety of experiences that have helped them to understand yeah. what things are. But that's not you, man. You're like you've got a <laughs> lot of experience. Yeah. I so, appreciate that, man. It's peace. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, well, it, 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 without all the data, it's like, how are you supposed to know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so with all that, I don't know, like, what do you think makes a father, a father? <sighs> Man, honestly, I, I think I've been asking myself that question for a while now. And I think it's because of my situation. And I think that um, growing up in a broken home, for one, I never truly understood what a father really was. I had a stepfather, mm -hmm. right? But my stepfather had secrets, too, that I never knew about. I remember going inside the closet one day and seeing a present wrapped. And uh, when I pulled it out the closet, it had a name, Little Jerry. And that's my father's, my stepfather's name, mm -hmm. right? When I would go to church with him, people would say, hey, is that little Jerry? And I'm like, little Jerry? Oh, they just said it because I'm a junior. Maybe because I'm just, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm brushing it off or whatever. Yeah. Come to find out he had a uh, son from a previous relationship. Mm -hmm. And in my family, we had a lot of secrets. So I didn't even know that he wasn't my real dad. So I was like 13 years old. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So going through life, I never really paid attention um, to like, I don't know how to explain it. The bond that me and him had, I just had a lot of resentment of every situation that my family had going on. So I never paid attention to anything outside of, I can't wait to get out of here. You yeah. know what I mean? So when I turned 15, I was gone. After that, I think I just started making my own conclusions in my head about everything, like you said before, in life because of my experience. Um, so when I had my first child, I had it out of wedlock. Mm -hmm. And in doing it, I didn't know exactly the complications that will come with it yeah. you know what I mean but yeah. unfortunately he passed and um with that hurt me and his mother experience it was more like yo if we try it again do you think that would bring us closer together which was stupid I mm -hmm. mean now that I look back at it, I was 20 like 28 at the time and I'm like yo let's do it again but then again I didn't understand why or 
you know, like, what am I doing this for with you? We're not married. We're not in any, even in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I guess we're doing it to kind of ease some pain and kind of see how would this one come out. And in doing it, I brought a child inside the world broken already because of the home not being unified. So I think through it, it at least I can finally kind of have that, I wouldn't say closure, but begin that conversation with myself about what really is a father, because now I have her in the home with me every day. Mm-hmm. I can look at her. I can pick her up. I can, you know, when she cries, yo, try to figure out what's wrong with her. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think now I'm on that journey. Exactly. What is a father? And for right now, what I believe a father is, is just someone who is, I don't know, man. It's like, you're not willing to give up on the idea of making sure that you have this child's best interests from the time that they're in this world until the time they're on their own outside of your reach. Yeah. You know what I mean? That means I have to be the better person for myself every day when I wake up. I need to be the better version. So I need to keep learning more about myself so that I can then teach this little person when they're navigating through life, like how to maintain emotions, how to look out for the snakes in the grass. Mm-hmm. And excuse my, you know, talk. It's just like yeah, my yeah. other side coming out. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, like I said, I'm still on that journey trying to figure out that question. And, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that I'm, I don't use the, the wrong word. I'm not regretful of the decisions I made, um, because of my children. I mean, I love all of them. I think I just wish I would have done it right mm. so that they wouldn't have to be brought up in the home where the father is not present. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that to me is where, when she was born, I was able to have that conversation with myself because even with the children living outside the home, I always had to doubt like, man, I messed up. I'm not a good father. If I was a good father, I would be with the mother and I would be there with them every day. I'll be able to go to every football game, every basketball game, uh, go to every school recreational activity when needed. You know what I mean? So I think, that made me doubt myself in a lot of ways, mm. um, having, you know, those situations outside of my home. Yeah. But um, she's brought a whole new aspect to me uh, since she's been born. And, um, yeah, man, I think I'm having that conversation with myself right now. I you think that's me? the whole point, brother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. Yeah. That's, but that's, that's really interesting. And, the, again, this goes back to why I think you're such a reasonable person. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're, as you're, you're diving deeply into this with Italy's, you're like, well, wait, what does that mean about me as a nah. father for for my other children? But if I don't find you to be the kind of person who just goes, yeah, I don't know, and just kind of move on, right? Yeah, no. So, so Adelise is probably going to change how you are a father to your other children. Yeah, and right. How can I find a way that I can love them and provide for them and be there for them, but... It's different, right? Because yeah. you and Heidi are married, so like there is this new entity in the marriage that demands a certain degree of, I don't know, respect, and uh, it, there are things that are unique to that, yeah. which are not there with your other children's mothers, yeah. right? And so, so you have to figure out how to navigate that and yeah. still be there for them and still have ha- <clears throat> have the children understand that we're family. Yeah. And it's and it's messy and it's complicated. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's very complicated because a lot of the times there's a lot of envious and, and jealousy in it, right? Mm-hmm. Because of the mothers. I'm not saying that they're jealous. Oh, he moved on and this and this and this. I think it's more like this is why God kind of told us, you know, like, or not to have sex before marriage because mm-hmm. I don't think we realize the damage that it causes each other and the children at the time. I think in the moment of, you know, just... Uh, what they call it, passion, lust, whatever, you're doing whatever and you're not really thinking about the consequences. So mm-hmm. a lot of the times now for me personally, the mothers are still seeing me as that old Anthony. Mm-hmm. Like they don't see the new Anthony that Heidi has. Like even though I still mess up, when they look at me, it's more like, oh, he's just that still who I met back then. Yeah. And that's translating to the child, kind of, yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah. I'll be open. Like I, I don't believe in hiding anything. So my... Um, son William and his mm-hmm. mother I believe that's what's going on right now like I was kept from him the first three years of his life basically mm-hmm. you know what I mean when he was born um, she had me going through this whole court situation to where it kind of 
and I'm not gonna lie, at the point made me want to give up because when Anthony was born, which is it's it get kind of confusing. So let me try to break it down so it's not right. Yeah. Um, we're not talking about the Anthony that passed. My other two sons were born two months apart, mm -hmm. and at this time of my life, I was like, man, living it up in all the wrong ways, mm -hmm. and I was moving real fast, and I'm not caring about anything in life, just really on this, you know, road to destruction because of the pain that I felt because of Anthony uh, mm -hmm. Alexander that passed, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So when I had um, those two, Anthony Langston and his mother were cool. We're like best friends, you know what I mean? Um, that's like, well, I wouldn't say best friends. I would say that then we were best friends. Now mm -hmm. we just have this very strong respect for one another because mm -hmm. of the fact that we have this child together. Yeah. But the other mother is totally different. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. She is more like, I hate you. I don't think you understand the issues you put me through. Yeah. And what I realized is that before me, she had relationship issues that mm -hmm. I then contributed to you played into it played yeah. into it right so it's not really me that she's mad at she's really mad at i wouldn't say herself but she's kind of mad at the whole situation here i am again with yeah. x y and z yeah. you know what i mean how did i do this oh you know what it's him and i think she 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 never knew me well enough to really understand who i was as a person yeah like you said before you know me so when yeah. you look at me you have this whole depiction of who i am as a character with her and it makes me sound so bad when I say this, but I'm not. You know yeah. what I mean? It was like one of those, God forgive me. It's like a one night stand type situation. And mm -hmm. I think that's what I had to realize. Like, you know what? This individual, when she's, when she's, you know, coming at me in all different ways, attitude wise, um, just going off on me. It's not really me because she doesn't really know me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. I'm trying to get her to understand like, yo, we can work together to raise this child. But with her, it's more like, I don't want that with you. you yeah, know what I mean? yeah. You you kind of become this embodiment of all the things that she's angry at. Exactly. In the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it took me a while to understand that because before I would feed into it. Like you know what? Forget it. I give up. You know what I mean? It, it, it shouldn't be this hard. And I'm comparing my relationship with her to the mother of Anthony Langston. And I'm like, why can't it be like that? And if it's not, this is not healthy for me, which was stupid for yeah. me to think like that anyway. But over the years, it's made me more tougher and resilient toward um, that situation as in, you know what, I'm not gonna give up, no matter how it looks, you know what I mean? So I think along the way, a lot of it kind of helped put things in perspective. So when I talk to young you know, men now, it's more like, yo, you gotta be careful of, for one, who you entangle yourself with. Um, you got to be careful when you are, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, in this world, yeah. you know, yeah. laying up with people. You know what I mean? Like I tell them, this is why God gave us the, the, the I wouldn't say commandment, but the, the advice of, of not to, you know, sleep around before marriage. Because it yeah. does cause so much, I mean, um, you know, strife within the kid's life, everybody when it's broken. You know what I mean? So yeah. there's this, um, yeah, a couple things kind of spring to my mind when you're saying this. Uh, um, I've heard this saying that comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah. So when you start comparing different people, different situations, yeah. it'll rob you of what is present that you could have. Yeah. Right. Um, so that, that kind of came to my mind. The other thing I'm thinking of is how it's interesting. So the, the law thinking secularly, like, I don't know, speed limit signs or whatever, right? The yeah. law the, of, of our country is there. You can kind of think of it, somebody with uh, a stronger will or authority imposing things on you, yeah. right? So, yeah, you want to drive your car, that's fine. Just don't drive over the speed limit <laughs> or else there's consequences. Exactly. Right? So, um, but how that differs from God's law. Yeah. Because God's law, right, where he says, um, you get married, you become one. Yeah. His law is there to encourage you to flourish in yeah. life. So instead of just saying, no, don't do these things, like God, he's such a gentleman, right? He's like, <laughs> go do what you want to do. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. There's consequences, consequences though. consequences, yeah. But the consequences are, it's life or death, right? So yeah. you can go do whatever you want. That's going to lead to death in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Or here's the law, and you can do your best to follow it, and the the more you grapple with this over the course of your life, the more you're going to grow and yeah. thrive. Yeah. Right. And just imagine, man, just imagine what it would be like 
all those families out there, if if they were all all the couples was were still married. Yeah, yeah. I mean that I I have that thought sometimes, and I think about what the world would look like. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But then I snap back into reality, yeah. <laughs> and it's more like as long as we have evil and good. I mean, it it it's. Yeah. We yeah, you never, got married bad people too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. But it never, and I hate to sound so like negative, but it's like it never will change. And I think the best that we can do is educate people or encourage people as we continue to grow mm-hmm. and try to, you know, s- um, save mm-hmm. as many as we can to keep from going down that road. Yeah, letting them know like this does really damage the kid. Because even growing up, I was damaged, which I didn't even know until I went to counseling. The effects that my broken home had on me. You know what I mean? And um, I would never want that for my children. But I understand now the challenge in it. Um, exactly, again, why God gave us, you know, as you say, the law, you know what I mean, to go by. And it's like, man, I wish I would have listened a little bit, <laughs> a yeah. little bit more. <laughs> well, and, and but the, the flip side of this, too, which I, I also think is really kind of interesting, the fact that you didn't listen, nah. and now you carry this with you, right? Uh, when, when Jesus... Came back to life, right? After the crucifixion, when he, the, after the resurrection, when he presented himself to the apostles. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, you're like doubting Thomas. He's like, I won't believe till I put my hand in the holes in his, or yeah. I, put my fingers in the <laughs> hole in his hand and in his side, right? Like, I don't believe till I see it, yeah. right? So when Jesus, uh, when after his resurrection, he still had the wounds. Yeah. And I think there's something very deeply there to, to contemplate is his wounds were redemptive for other people. It brought Thomas into belief nah. because he could see the pain for, or he could he could experience the wound caused by the crucifixion, right? And so thinking now about our lives, right? It's uh the guy who goes to prison and gets out of prison says, You don't want to do that, brother? Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna listen to him. <laughs> yeah. Because he's been there. Exactly. Right? The guy who's the addict who's saying you don't want to try that? Yeah. You're going to listen to him. Yeah. So our wounds become redemptive to other people yeah, yeah. too, right? Helps kind of draw us in. So I think as really crappy as it is, yeah. <laughs> right? How how <laughs> things play out. I mean, I, I could say the same thing in my life too. It's yeah. the, the, the bad choices that I've made that have hurt people uh, – are, are like the the holes in my hands and and the spear you know hole in my side from the crucifixion. They are the things that now I can't that that have been redeemed. Nah. My pain has been redeemed enough to where I can go and help other people not do that. Yeah. Or if they've done it, I can help them through it. Yeah. You know. That's weird. So I think it's something. It, it's hard to. It's a hard medicine to swallow. Man. Nah. But I think there's something there to really think of. It is because, I mean, every negative situation is a positive. And I think we have to be willing to go through and find that positive. So even though sometimes I don't like the burn and the headache and, and the worries that come with it, yeah. um, as you say, it's still my story. You know what I mean? And my story definitely can help other individuals from not going down the same road. Uh, but, yeah, that's peace, man. I agree with you saying. Uh, so... Um. We had a, this is something new that I've, I've been hearing about, and I think this is something kind of interesting too, because it, it, I think it goes to what you've been describing as <clears throat> father and marriage, yeah. right? How the two are, are very closely related. Yeah. And so uh, we had a pope, uh, a couple popes ago, um, Pope John Paul II. Yeah, you said a couple popes ago. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> a couple, couple popes ago. Yeah. Saint Pope John Paul II. Yeah. <laughs> um, he wrote this, and I I, I, I want to go get the document and actually read it because I hear a lot of teaching about it. But his, the thing he wrote was the theology of the body, and so um, the document speaks to the sacredness and the holiness of our our bodies, like who we are. We're not just a soul, like trapped in a body that we're like controlling, like a robot or something. Uh. We're not just our bodies; we're both, right? And with that comes. The differences, the beautiful complementary differences between man and woman, uh, sex, all that stuff, all plays a part of it because who we are as creatures, yeah. right? So I was listening to this guy talking about it, and he was specifically talking about the uh, the theology of a man's body. And as he was saying this, I was like, "What?" <laughs> like mind blown. I'd never thought of this before. Yeah. Right. So you know how like all all the words we use have some kind of ancient root word like yeah. that it comes from. 
right? Okay. Uh, have you ever thought of what the root word for testicle is? <laughs> no. <laughs> Never. Like, why would anybody think of that, right? Yeah. But anyway, so he starts talking about it. And I'm like, wait, what? What? Whoa. <laughs> mind blown, right? So uh, the root part is test. Yeah. Right. And you're like, okay, so what's, what's the root word of that mean? So it comes from some old Latin word. Yeah. And, uh, what that word to test means is when they would melt, uh, like metal ore, they would pour them in these little clay pots and they'd see how the metal would settle. Yeah. Um, or the liquid, I guess it's all molten, right? So they would see if it would settle cause they were testing it to see if there's anything, uh, valuable in it, gold, silver, mm. stuff like that. Okay. So that's cool. So now, to test something means you're looking for something, but it's not just you're looking for something that the result testifies to something, yeah. right? So it speaks to something. It speaks in this case that there's something valuable in this thing. Okay. So more interestingly than that, then when the church was putting together the old and, and new testaments of the Bible, no, testaments. Yeah. So there's that word again. So that word testament uh, or testamentum, it doesn't talk to, um, it doesn't necessarily just mean like I am testifying to something, I am bearing witness to something. It also means uh, they they used it to replace the Greek word for covenant. Yeah. So it is a covenant, uh, and a covenant. So the difference between like a contract and a covenant. Okay. So if you and I had a contract together. It we're, we're agreeing for an exchange of goods or services for like money or something, yeah. right? Um, you make cool, you make a cool shirt. Yeah. I, I'm, I have a contract with you. I'm going to buy 500 shirts yeah. you're, and I'm going to give you this much money, but they've got to be good quality. Yeah. Right. Kind of thing. That's a co- uh, that, That's a contract. Yeah. A covenant instead is an exchange of peoples. So a marriage is not a contract. It's a covenant. Yeah. It's a, we belong to one another now. Yeah. There's no separating this thing. And so all of that then goes to the root word of our, our male genitals. Yeah. It is a testament. It is the thing that testifies to where you come from. Yeah. It's who you belong to yeah. comes from this place. Yeah. And that that is supposed to be in the Christian view at least uh, intimately tied to marriage. Yeah. So we have this covenant that forms, and in this covenant, we have life comes from it, right? And that life that comes from it testifies back to our covenant. And our marriage is a sign of Jesus and God's love for his people. So all of those things, bringing life, that, that's the first commandment God gives. He makes Adam and Eve, and he says, go be fruitful and multiply. Yeah. Right. So all of the all of that speaks back to this covenant, this testifying, this witnessing to our relationship with our spouses. So having children, relationship with spouse, relationship with Christ, relationship with God as his people, as his creation and yeah. stuff like that. And just thinking about all that, when this guy was talking, I was like, <laughs> what the heck? But it shows that they had a very deep understanding when they chose that word for that body part. Yeah, yeah. Right? They're, they're like, there is something here that you should understand. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. Like, it seemed relevant to the kind of thing we're going to talk about today. <laughs> and I just I wanted to kind of share it and just see what yeah, kind of what, what you think. Yeah, man. I mean, honestly, I never thought of, thought on the lines of anything that deep. I mean, from listening to you, I'm like, yo, I, I understand it. Yeah. It makes sense. And I'm like, man, okay. <laughs> you taught me something new today. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, it it's, really is. Yeah. Um, and it, it even kind of, it shows that deep connection with bringing life, having children um, to God too. Like in, God, in, uh, in Psalm 139, it says, um, it says, for you formed my inward parts, you knit, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. Yeah. I praise you, for I am wondrous, wondrously made. Yeah. Right. So just even God so intimately knows us that yeah. in that moment of of conception, that covenant is present. Yeah, that's something to think about. That's, that's for real. I'm gonna take that with me yeah. and, and ponder on that. Like, yo, that was deep. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. 
it is it is it, 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 it's something right there's definitely there's things there to think of and I, and it you know i think there's um how do i say it i like that you said earlier you when you talk to young men you try and caution them yeah. about certain things and i think a lot of times our world we will do things such as um how do i live how do i encourage you or or encourage myself to live a life that is like good enough yeah. like i'm going to stay out of like you, you know you do what you think just don't get don't get caught up in the law right so like do your thing up to that line yeah. where <laughs> you know get away with what you can get away with just don't cross it yeah and that's kind of a very different thought than teaching someone to pursue virtue. Exactly. And and I think that's, to me, that's the most important thing. I, I tell a lot of young men, like, don't waste time. If, if I would have listened to a lot of older people when I was younger explain some of the things to me that how they did, I would be, I wouldn't say more far ahead than what I am right now, but I would see myself a lot of of hurt and pain, you know what I mean? It's like I tell them all the time, don't worry about, you know, um, don't worry about worldly things. Don't worry about the women. Don't worry about the money. Mm -hmm. Focus on who you are, your purpose in life. What is your purpose? When you focus on that, everything else will come um, and you will know that it's meant to be. And my mom told me one thing I'll never forget because when I was growing up, as you already know, I was I was bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, my first car I ever had was a Lexus at nineteen. And when I brought it home, she said that, you know, you think you, you think you hot stuff, don't you? And I'm like, you know, I do what I do. <laughs> and she was like, well, if it's a blessing from God, He'll make it to where you always be able to keep it. And if it's from the devil, He'll make it to where it's always gonna go. And you have to do things to keep getting it back you know what mm -hmm. i mean like you'll lose this but you got to get it back and that ambition and that drive in you is coming from him and i try to explain that to, to young men like yo understand your spirit understand exactly who you are in this world because now they have social media um depicting um what it means to be a man you know mm -hmm. what i mean in yeah, order yeah, to yeah. get this get this you have to have this house this car this is so they're chasing material things yeah and it's kind of like yo that's not really that make you happy if you do get this audi a8 they're going to come out with another one two years later. You're going to want that one, yeah. right? If they come out with this pair of Gucci shoes, they're going to come out with another pair next year, and you're going to want that. You're constantly chasing things that really don't matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. love you, figure out who you are, and just focus on that aspect and just, yo, grow within yourself. I mean, we have more conversation than that, but it's like the easiest way to break it down. Yeah, you, you know, know what's I mean? it's sad, too, is because... Um, off, I often tell people when I can, um, little off topic, I'm, I'm a super feminist in the way that I sense that, I mean, that, uh, what it is to be a woman calls men to their highest calling, yeah. right? Like it, the men, it, you think of the old, like uh, fairy tale kind of stories, right? Like somebody's buddy gets kidnapped by the dragon. <laughs> they don't go save him. They're like, sorry, bud. Like, yeah, it's not, it didn't work out for you. <laughs> The princess is in the tower. Yeah. Like they go to war to go save the princess. Yeah. Right. So there's like something about woman that calls men to their gr kind of greatness. Yeah. Um, and with all the social media stuff, yeah. you know, cars, the women, women have to look a certain way, have to act a certain way, have to be a certain way. Yeah. Right. And it, so it's, it's calling us down into this kind of base level of, of being yeah. that there's nothing virtuous about it. And, and I think unfortunately, because we all have such a desire to be loved yeah. and to love and to be known and, and that yeah. intimacy, um, it, it just turns into this downward snowball yeah. kind of, of, of things where men are, they're not just chasing cars, they're chasing women and the women want to be chased. So they're doing whatever to themselves to, to be more likable. Exactly. And stuff. Exactly. And, and I think that that's one thing about Heidi that, that stood out because Amen. I lived in downtown for like 10 years and yeah. living in downtown, you come across a lot of different situations, a lot of different women and people. And I've never known anyone outside of my, maybe my grandmother that wanted my spirit to be saved more than Heidi. Like when I was around my friends, they didn't care about whether I was going to heaven or hell. Yeah. All they cared about is what are we doing now? What's the next lick? Yeah. How can you get us to this next stage of life and how can we accomplish more and more and more? And on the inside, I'm going through it. 
Yeah. No one knew like what I'm going through as far as your depression. I have everything I need like and more. I mean, I wasn't rich, but I could do whatever I wanted to do in that time and get up. And when I met Heidi, it was more like, but are you happy? And I never understood happiness in that moment. I'm yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I guess. We've talked to that, about that before, you and me, like yeah. the difference between happiness and, <laughs> and joy. joy. And we just, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, I, I guess I am. Like, I could do whatever I want. Like, I'm not hurting for anything. And she's like, yeah, but you still just don't seem like you have peace. And I'm like, ah, oh, here you go. You know yeah. what I mean? Not knowing that conversation would then lead me to like, you know what? I've never met anyone like you. Like, you have my best interest. And I tell every man that when you find that woman that has your best interest and she is concerned with where your soul will reside once you leave this earth, that's who you want to be with. Yeah. That's the person that's going to hold you down as we quote unquote say in the streets, that's going to hold you down to the T because she won't let you be what you want to be. She's going to challenge you in every area to make you a better you. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it's, a, it's it's not so much a pursuit of what you want to be, but who you're meant to be. Exactly. You know what I mean? So that's what I try to convey to anyone that comes to me like, yo, my wife, not going to lie, sometimes, yo, she do good on my nerve. But when I go back and I sit down and think about what she says, like, you know what? She's right, though. Yeah, I you know hate what that. Mean? <laughs> yeah. like, you feel me? <laughs> like, yeah. Why'd you have to go and say that? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny. So we, So something Father Stephen always says, um, to me is most of the time our relationships, our worldly relationships influence how we interact with God nah. when it should be the other way around. God should enter, should sorry influence how we interact with one another. Nah. Right. So if I have a bad relationship with my father, I might have a bad relationship with my spiritual father nah. because it's through my bad relationship or good relationship or whatever that I try to understand God when instead I should be looking at my worldly father going, and, and and how do I be a son to him like I'm a son to God the Father? How do I be, uh, how do I love you the way I love God the Father, right? So we've always got it in reverse. Yeah. So thinking about that, you know, how do you think, so let's say, let's, let's be hypothetical. Yeah. How does Anthony dad, how do you be a dad that's informed by how God is your father. Like, how do you, with, with your children, with your spouse, with Heidi, like, how do you do approach that starting from God out versus from them back to God? You know what? And I think if I answer this question wrong, just, just forgive me. But I, <laughs> No, man, just use your imagination. Whatever. I, like, what do you think? I think I understand the question, and I think I'm going to answer it in the way that I know best. To me, God is love. Mm-hmm. And when I look at anybody in the world, that's what I see. You know what I mean? So when I look at you and I approach you, you can do. I don't have expectations of people. Once I learn who you are and you show me who you are as a person, mm-hmm. I take that and I try to understand like, yo, you going to do what you do. Yeah. And I love you from that standpoint. Yeah. I won't give you the room to hurt me, but God is love. And with that being said, Whatever you do as my son, as my wife, as my mother, it's not saying that I won't, I won't take it to heart, Mm -hmm. but I'll forgive you no matter what the situation is, because no matter what, it's like, yo, you, you're my family and God didn't give up on me and I'm not going to give up on you. You know what I mean? So that's how I really approach a lot of people in my life, but I have a small circle. I've narrowed it down to where it's like, you know what, if I can live without you and you're not serving a purpose in my life, then so be it. Yeah. So right now I only have really like three people as males that I talk to you, my friend CJ, which is like my solid man and my brother, uh, Sam, and yeah. then Heidi as my wife, other than that, my family. Yeah. And that's where my biggest struggle comes from is because my family, all women and they all have male issues and it's like, man, it's taking life out of me and trying to be there for them um, as, you know, family. And I take a step back to realize, like, but you know what? My wife needs me more mm-hmm. than that. And that energy that I'm putting toward them, I got to redirect that to her. And now my children, you know what I mean? So yeah, the we- way I was able to do that was more like, you know what? No matter what y'all do, I've made up in my mind that you are my mother. You are my sister. And I know the pain and the things you went through in life. And I know what makes you who you are. There's yeah. nothing you can do that can hurt me. You yeah. know what I mean? So with that being said, whenever you want to talk to me, you call me. I'm not going to require you to call me every day. If you do something that, you know, 
to other people may be hurtful. To me, I'm more realistic. I have that eye like, yo, but that's that's her. I expected that from her. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense, I don't know. No, no, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's good because we have like we have this really sobering realization that we are not God. Yeah. Or we are not Jesus. We are called to be like that. Yes, but exactly. But no matter what we do, you can be the most holy person in the world, and you're not. You're nowhere close. Exactly. And so, how do we love people and protect ourselves? Yeah. Right. How do we put that little bit of a distance and say, "I'm going to love you, but I'm going to love you over there." Yeah. Right. And I'm not going to allow you to hurt me. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna. But yeah, protecting yourself, protecting your family, right? Because yeah. you do kind of have to build up the walls and have some kind of bubble around your family. Yeah. This is my wife. This is my kids. Like, I'm going to guard what comes in and out. Most definitely. But that doesn't mean I don't love you. Exactly. Right. Because Jesus. And you could be the the worst person in the world, like the worst possible thing you can think yeah. of, and you're the one he's up on that cross for. Yeah, he's like, no, I love you yeah. enough to do this, yeah. right? And so it's 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 so heroic. It's something that I, I think for men at least, like we're like, oh yeah, I could I could do that, I could do that. And then yeah. when it comes down to it, we're like, oh, I'm a coward, <laughs> you know, like I don't know how or whatever, yeah. right? So yeah, man, that's that's really interesting. So. Okay, so if there was one of the, my favorite things about doing a podcast is yeah. like this stuff, it'll be there forever. Right? <laughs> yeah. So one of these days, you're going to be long gone. I'm going to be long gone. Maybe my grandkids will hear this or something yeah. like this, right? So if there's something you could say to all your kids, either individually or to them as a group, like what would be the one thing you would want them to know more than anything else? Man. You know what? Mm-hmm. We'll definitely say that um, no matter how you view life, you're not a mistake. God has put you here for a purpose, no matter what you believe, no matter what you hear. And um, as long as you pursue loving yourself, uh, knowing yourself, and just trying to figure out your purpose in life, everything else will take care of itself. You know what I mean? Um, that's one thing I want more for my children more than anything is to grow up knowing that they're much more than what society will depict them to be. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, yo, you're much more than just, uh, uh, uh I, I don't know what words use without making anyone feel any type of way, yeah, but yeah, just yeah. to know that there's something inside of you that if you dig deep enough inside, yo, you're going to change, um, the perspective of so many people because, for one, you come from me, <laughs> yeah, right? right? But uh, yeah, you come from me, you know what I mean? But no, really, like, just, man, follow your heart. And um, the journey is beautiful. It's, it's a beautiful ride, um, full of pain, man, full of joy. You know, it it's, it's, it's can be hell sometimes, you know what I mean? But it'd be all right. <laughs> it'd be all right. You feel yeah, me? I do. All right, man. This has been great. No, thanks for this. That's why. <laughs> uh, and everyone who joined us, thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next time. God bless. Yeah. Peace. Peace.